Hello, Pokemon fans! This is Pro Pokenew coming back. I hope everyone had an excellent weekend. Uh, I hope so too, because I'm actually recording this last Thursday, so um, I actually have an exam on Sunday, that's why, so I have to take a lot of time the next three days to study. So um, I'll let you guys know on that on Tuesday. Anyways, uh, today I've decided to bring you a standard OU match against uh, the other. Another person who I hope can do some narrations for us, his name is Herb Mags. Uh, he's generally not on PO that often, or at all for that matter. He's kind of like Batman, you can't find him at night, you can't find him during the day. He might as well be Bruce Wayne. Anyways, um, so uh, just to show off, he is more of a standard player. So he likes to play a lot of the uh, standard teams, weather, stuff like that. He's actually going to be... Um, it's actually going to be a close match today, so why don't we just get straight into it. I am actually going to be using my very first OU team. This is when I was just entering OU, so uh, right near the end of the popular weather. And uh, so you're going to see a lot of my professional noobness that I uh, am so proud of for some strange reason. But anyways, uh, he's going to be using his alternate sand team. His main team is usually the rain team. But uh, let's just get straight into this. He's going to lead off with his Tyranitar as I start with my Infernape. Now, I don't know what he was thinking I was going to do, but I'm just going to go straight for the close combat. Maybe he was just trying to scout. Maybe he didn't think Tyranitar was very important. But that's the first turn 6-5 for me. So uh, we're off to a great start. As you guys know, this is still my Sash Infernape. He's going to switch into his Rotom Wash, and as I switch out, I'm going to go into my Blissey. And... Uh, <laughs> I really wish I still had this thing, but, you know, I had to make room for other guys. He's just going to switch out and go to his Caesar. Now, I want to check to see if this thing is going to have superpower, so I'm just going to go for the Protect, and uh, this is actually my Wish Passing Blissey, and he indeed has a superpower, so this is excellent information because now I am going to switch into the Water Pokemon that I used to have on this team, which was the Jellicent instead of the Swamper. So Jellicent's going to take that superpower very nicely. And, uh, I know he's choiced, just knowing him, he's gonna be choice. but, uh, he makes a mistake, he goes for the superpower again, I guess not realizing that I'm a ghost, but, uh, I just go for that hydro pump to hit anything that he's gonna do, and, uh, at this point he's gonna realize, oh, right, I'm banded, <laughs> he's gonna go into his Rotom Wash as I go for the hydro pump, now the set on my Jellicent here, you know, being a noob, I have the hydro pump, the energy ball, the toxic, and the recover. So, uh, not the greatest coverage. I think I switched up the ice beam for a while. But I had the energy ball just for Rotom Washes. He makes a nice switch, goes in the Magna Zone. I knew he would do that. I just really didn't want to. I just didn't feel like, you know, over predicting that quickly. So, I'm going to switch out my Celebi. This is my uh, Life Orb Celebi, just as normal. Uh, he's, as he goes for the substitute, and I'm thinking, okay, he's knowing, again, knowing him, he's probably going to have the Magnapult HP Fire, so this Earth Power is just going to break his uh, substitute, and I'm going to take that HP Fire to the face. And, you know, having Life Orb and all, this is not very favorable for me, but he actually switches out and goes into his Caesar as I go for the Earth Power again, maybe thinking, well, I outrace him, so he probably had to switch. I was kind of fearing he would bring in his Landorus, which you guys will eventually see. Uh, now, I'm thinking, okay, Celebi's faster than Caesar, right? Oh yeah, bullet punch. <laughs> so that was, um, noob mistake number one. Noob mistake number two is sending my Haxorus out and setting up a DD. And again, I'm thinking, I'm faster than this guy, wait a minute. Bullet punch is a priority move, isn't it? So, and I'm the Lumberry, so this is just really big mistakes. This is what not to do. So I have to go into my Lucario, and I finally get to show this off to you guys. Because it's actually a special variant. It's the uh, it's gonna have the Aura Sphere, and so I'm gonna take out a Caesar as I take myself out to Life Orbs. So that's a nice double down. As long as that Caesar is out of the way, that was huge mistakes on my part. But um, he's gonna send in his Landers now as I send out my Blissey just to scout. I'm just gonna go for the Protect to see what this guy's gonna be holding, and he has the U-turn. So I'm guessing this thing is choiced in some way. Now. Um, I, at this point, I didn't really know that he would have uh, so many choice people, so he switches out and goes into his Rotom Wash. I'm thinking maybe it has something else like the leftovers. I can't see it, though. He's going to go into his Rotom Wash, and I figured, okay, 
this thing already can't hit me well, but I'm going to switch out anyways, going to my Haxorus, predicting him to go for a Hydro Pump or a Volt Switch, and he actually goes for the Trick. And uh, he takes my Lumberry, I take his Choice Scarf. I'm, I'm saying, okay, so I got a, I got a Choice Scarf to Haxorus. This is pretty much, you know, good, because I have the Wish on him too now, so a lot more health than I again, guys. Now, new mistake number three, I go for the Brick Break. I, th I could have swore he was going to bring out his Magnezone, but even then... I was thinking, if I went for the Earthquake and he switched into Landorus, this would have been very bad. So I just go for the safe Brick Brick. I could have gone again for Dragon Claw to get as much damage as I possibly could off. But, again, this is my this is one of my first times playing OU. So I'm going to be making a ton of mistakes. Now, I don't see Leftovers on this thing, so I'm just going to go out to Blissey to, do anything, to see what he's going to do. And he goes for the Nasty Plot. Okay. Now, I am a specially defensive Blissey. Not, no physical investment, max HP max special defense calm nature so i'm thinking at this point i can take anything he's gonna throw at me he he's gonna get the plus six though and i was really skeptical i'm saying okay blissey i know you're a beast i love using you in just casual play and i think you can actually take a hit so i go for the wish and now i go for the seismic toss just to get a whole bunch of damage off on him hoping that he doesn't have any form of recovery that he's got like Leaf Storm, and he actually has to recover. Okay, so I should have known. So I'm guessing this thing's going to have Life Orb. Uh, just considering that he has the recover, right? Now, mine doesn't run it because I have the uh, Giga Drain. That's what I rely on. But he goes for the recover again as I now reveal I have Toxic. And this is perfect because at plus six, I don't want him staying in very long. So uh, this will kind of reduce. Either he has to switch out. And I don't care if he heals it off with Natural Cure. He has to switch out or die toxic and look how much i take that plus six giga drain on from a, on a blissey wow that's amazing i blissey go to ubers seriously that was fantastic <laughs> um, so he's just gonna go for the recover predicting my protect which is absolutely fine between sandstorm and uh the toxic damage plus the life orb damage he'll never be at full so I'm thinking pretty well, okay, he's going to go for the Giga Drain, I can live it without a crit, I'm just going to go for the Seismic Toss. And this was actually the key play to take this thing out. Why? Because now, I, I this was actually my first calculation ever, when I was playing in uh, standard games. Between the Toxic and the Sandstorm, if he stayed in right now, which he does and goes for the Giga Drain, kind of a last retaliation, uh, he's actually going to die, because he doesn't have leftovers, so this is perfect. His Celebi's gone, Blissey, you're a beast, you're just a big fat blob that everything bounces off, because watch this, he's going to go for the Hydro Pump, and oh my goodness, you still don't take it out. Now I go for the Wish, and there's a reason for this, I could have taken him out, and just let myself die to the Sandstorm, but I do the Wish for a reason. You guys remember my Infernape, right? He doesn't know that I have the Fake Out, so I'm just going to go for the Fake Out, take out his Rotom Wash, and then the Sandstorm's going to hit me first, and now, thank you to the Wish... I'm going to be back at Sash level, so he can't take me out with any move, I'll be able to hit something. He sends out his Landorus, locks himself into Earthquake, but, or maybe I don't think he's locking himself in, but now I go for the close combat, and now I see he doesn't have leftovers, so I'm a little concerned with what this thing is, and I'm trying to think what it could be, I'm thinking, is he choiced also? I don't know what he's choiced in, but I'm just going to go into Jellicent, because I know his uh, Earthquake's not going to do much. He sends out his Magnezone. I just go for the Recover, predicting a switch. And now at this point, this is going to be painful because I have to deal with a Magnezone, a Landorus, with a Scarf Taxorus, and a Jellicent. So he hits me with a really painful Thunderbolt. I just go for the Hydro Pump to get as much damage on the thing as possible. And at this point, I know it's pretty much hopeless. I don't want him to hit Haxorus. I have to bring it out and just lock myself into something. And uh, as you guys saw before, this is the, probably the safest thing because I can't hit this thing with Earthquake because Landorus comes out and walls me. Dragon Claw might not take out the Magna Zone, so I have to lock myself into Brick Break. And so I lock myself into Brick Break. Magna Zone's going to go down, and now I'm thinking, okay, maybe I can get a Scarfed Crit on the Landorus. I live with 1%, and I'm thinking, can I go out with a Bang? No, because his Landorus is also Scarfed. So he actually had... Two Choice Scarfers and a Choice Bandit on his team. So that threw me way off. That was an excellent match, Herb Mags. Um, yeah, t two, two Scarfs and a Bandit. Definitely did not expect that. So comment, rate, and subscribe. Uh, 
I will be bringing some, a couple of, maybe a couple of unrated battles this week. Uh, it depends on whether or not I can actually find some battles that are actually more up to date. A lot of this, this one was way back in uh, maybe the beginning of November or uh, late October. Like, so far I've been showing you some pretty older matches, but uh, I hope to bring you some newer ones. I actually have a couple of teams that I'm testing out right now. Um, they're not doing too well, to be quite honest, but uh, I'm really hoping to just do more research. Like I said, uh, I'm recording this last Thursday, so I'm in study mode. I don't have a lot of time right now. And, um, you know, Mustafa is just trying to fit in with Ash and all them. To be honest, I don't know why I don't really find Ash the greatest Pokemon trainer, but hey, where would we be without Ash, right? Until then, guys, I'll see you tomorrow. Peace.